you know, one almost universal thing that I hear from clients when we're done working yeah. is that they're completely surprised by the number of decisions that go into designing their home. Uh, making architecture just involves just so many decisions um, that I think it, it can be really overwhelming without someone to guide that process. And as architects, it's our job to methodically lay out a system for making those decisions and, and then also guide them through the particular timing that those decisions have to happen in. When you actually go through the design process, you realize that all the things they spend five or more years teaching you in school is actually a really small portion of what you do. Of course, there's design thinking and they're teaching you a methodology and history and theory and technical information. But by and large, my experience in school was that of teaching me how to think like an architect, getting me comfortable with my own design process. When you start practicing, you start putting buildings together, you realize that most of what you're doing is communicating with people, communicating with your clients, uh, dealing with financial issues, you're dealing with construction and technical issues, how you resolve materials and joints and connections. All of these things, of course, are subservient to the design concept and the idea, and that's all very important. But there is a huge raft of knowledge that you need to put a building together, uh, even something as seemingly simple as a house. All right, so today we're gonna to be reviewing all the materials I use for a typical client meeting. I'm not able to bring you into the exact meeting, but we had this meeting for the gallery house last week to review the exterior shell package. And I wanna review the agenda that I use, the materials that I develop, the physical materials, the models, the drawings, all of this stuff. Talk about my methodology, my approach, how the process works, and kind of bring you in that way. My agenda always opens with addressing client concerns and questions and a sort of recap of where we're at in the process, a sort of zoom out. This is where we were last time when we met. This is where we are now, things that we've been working on, things like that. Having an agenda ensures that by the end of the meeting, you have all of the questions that you wanted answered heading into the meeting answered. And then we'll do some meeting notes as follow up after this. And the meeting notes will assign tasks to everyone based on the things we decided in the meeting. Once we move from the opening, we're going to get into the meat of the agenda. And for this meeting, we want to be talking about the shell of the building. So the shell are things like doors and windows, exterior finishes, materials, just basically the shape of the building. As an architect, you have to be thinking about a dozen steps ahead of where you're at right now. And this is true for every part of the design process. We know that this building is gonna be in construction in the summer. The summer is the busiest time of year for our construction crews. So we need to get on a concrete subcontractor schedule and a site work contractor's schedule. And in order to do that, we need a foundation plan. And in order to develop a foundation plan, we need to know where all the structural loads are coming. And in order to do, know that, we need to know what the roof design is, the shape of the building. We need to know where our doors and windows are in the exterior shell. We also need to know where our plumbing is, our electrical is. There's probably a thousand different things that we actually need to know. But if you were to take all those decisions and put them in front of your client and say, well, you need to know this, 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 it's, it's overwhelming. I mean, it's overwhelming to me as an architect. I've done this many times before, but to present all of those decisions at once to your client is, it's just irresponsible and it's sort of, uh, it's unhelpful actually. And so what we do is we're, as architects, is we're gonna order the decision-making process and we're gonna parse out the number of decisions into these neat little packages. So I've done this long enough to know that if I follow my design process from beginning to end, I'm gonna land in a good place. Each one of these client meetings I view as a snapshot along the continuum of the design process. This really sets my approach to the materials that I generate for each meeting. That approach means I'm gonna have a diversity of materials. I'm gonna have some drawings which are hard-lined, like the floor plans, like the site plan, these are drawings and design components that we've been working on for a long time. So it makes sense that they're fixed. They're, they're more fixed. Um, they have structure to them. They're things we've been talking about for a long time. 
I'm gonna have some drawings which are hard-lined, but some, not everything is figured out. And for this particular presentation package, it's gonna be the exterior elevations. I'm gonna also have some sketches, so some design ideas that are, are presented in sketch form. So that's another layer of information. I'm gonna have a computer model for this particular one. I did a SketchUp model, and that's gonna show a different set of information. I have a whole bunch of images and magazines, uh, things that are not my architecture, but they suggest finish architecture and it's a really easy way for a client to be drawn into a certain image of a building and relate to that pretty quickly. I'm also gonna have a whole bunch of material samples that we can actually pick up and touch and engage with. Now I don't show up to these meetings with finished renderings. I, it's my belief that really the only finished rendering that matters is the finished building at the end of the project. So I produce a finished rendering and I say, look what I've created as the architect. Here you go, what do you think of it? Uh, the client can either like it or hate it. It doesn't draw them into the process in any way. It sort of puts the architect in a different place. This process here is collaborative, it's democratic. I really wanna draw my client into the decision-making process. And so having a range and a diversity of, you know, information that doesn't feel so fixed as a finished rendering does, just allows for more of an open dialogue. It's easier for someone to look at an image in these you know, magazines and these printouts and Pinterest boards and say, oh, I like that or I don't like that. And we can establish a common language of design rather than me saying, you know, your house looks like this. Um, that doesn't provide any sort of dialogue. And I find a lot of times clients are somewhat hesitant to say that they don't like something. In this whole process, I really try and encourage clients to tell me what they like and what they don't like. It's the most efficient process. As architecture students, we're trained to take critique and some pretty harsh critique. And what I say is, you know, nothing you're gonna tell me is gonna hurt my feelings. I've heard it all before. So I don't mind if you say, well, I just hate this elevation. It's, it's just, it's ugly. Like I'd much rather hear that than the client say, oh no, I like it, but really, a sort of half-hearted, I like it, and really be thinking inside, ooh, that's just awful. Because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run with that. I'm gonna develop it, and we're gonna take it to the next series of steps. And if we get three more steps down, down the road and the client then says, oh, I actually don't really like that, then I've just wasted all that fee and that time, and you know, so it's just not a good use of resources. And I kind of think of this almost like a, a Thanksgiving table where you're setting out way more food and portions uh, than anyone could possibly ever eat at one time, but it's your job to sort of pick and choose. And as we work together from that side of the table, the client side of the table and my side of the table, you know, pick and choose the elements that really help create the story of this building in this place, in this time. And this is part of a finished thought. It's not the fully formed finished thought. I don't think any digital production method is ever gonna replace uh, the notion that architects sketch. When you do it in a meeting environment, it has special value. I've never been in a single meeting where there hasn't been a roll of trace on the table and sketching of ideas and a real-time sharing of information between the client and back and forth from the client. It builds trust, it involves them in the process. You know, oftentimes they'll leave the meeting um, having generated some really cool ideas. A client meeting is a chance to present your ideas, but then also more importantly, hear the feedback from the client, like what's important to them. When you sketch in front of a client and you're working through a set of ideas with a client, say, you know, in this particular meeting, we presented a design for the kitchen and the pantry area, and there was some um, circulation issues. So we had the refrigerator located in the pantry, and they had always said that they wanted it out of the kitchen space, but actually when you look at the layout of it, it's a little bit inconvenient to have to walk into the pantry to always get into the refrigerator. So we talked about you know, different ways to relocate that, and that involves sketching. You have to be able to sketch your ideas real time with your client, and actually builds a lot of trust when you do that, when you're able to come up with three or four or five different schemes or ideas real time right there in front of them, and you can run through them quickly and say, okay, we can move the refrigerator here, or we can move it here, or we could close up this wall, you could access the pantry through the laundry. And when you're able to do that um, real time with them, it involves them, it brings them into the process, um, and it's just, it's a way of quickly sort of moving beyond what could be two or three or four emails back and forth. Did you try this? Did you try that? If you're able to do it real time, it's just so much more efficient. 
So another way I like to think about these client meetings, these sort of snapshots in the design process is as if we are writing a story. So the client and I come together and we pick up where we left off from the last time and we write the sort of next chapter. When you really draw your client into this process and you start developing a common language of design with each other, and for us this common language was this idea of this art gallery, so a place to store art, this huge space, in what's a diminutive plan, this huge gallery space, and then this extruded barn form. We start developing this language of barns and galleries and those ideas, their notions of what those things are and my notions of what those things are, start to sort of coalesce and smash together and they land in the architecture that we're developing together. Really one of the interesting evolutions of that is when the client starts completing your own thoughts. So one issue that we talked about during this last meeting was how to acoustically separate the living space from the dining uh, and kitchen space here. And so we talked about you know, possibly making this whole thing a glass wall, that was one option. We talked about making it this sort of thin partition wall with you know, sort of hinged doors in it. We talked about making it this thick zone and we talked about replicating what we're doing on the outside wall here which is you know, sort of double height glass but doing that here so that there's an opening in the bottom which is the sort of passage uh, that you enter the living room from and then a glazed opening up at the top and that you pass through this thick zone of books up to about the seven foot level and then above that there's a big glazed opening. The glazed opening preserves the view from the mezzanine out to the forest and the trees here, this sort of enfilade, this opening of spaces between, in, connection of spaces between inside and out, which they really liked. And putting a partition wall here sort of uh, gets in the way of that. So that preserves that idea. And then the client said, yeah, and then we can put a sliding barn door here. And that, that's the thing that will isolate it acoustically. You know, the great part about the client completing your thought or coming up with the ideas for the project is that it means that there is a common language language evolving and even if we're not completely aligned in that you know smashing all of these ideas together and looking at these images and taking these materials and putting them all together in a really loose and fluid state uh, builds this collaborative design we both have equal input and the result is greater than the sum of its parts and you know I think we're in a really good place when the design starts suggesting what our next move should be and that's a great example of you know, the design suggesting what the right thing to do is. Once designs start taking on a life of their own, uh, you know you're in a really good, good place. And that's where I think we're at with this. Smash that like button below if you find this video helpful in any way and share it around with someone who doesn't know about this channel. Appreciate you guys. Cheers, we'll see you again next time my friends.